this morning. Y'all ready for some barbecue? Amen. <laughs> Earl's ready for barbecue. I think my team went to go out and sample it. stand up and join us this morning. If you're joining online, welcome to Tree of Life, Lugerville, Texas. Happy Memorial Day weekend. So glad you're here with us. Father, we just welcome you this morning. Lord, we welcome you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the freedom that comes through Jesus. This morning, we just want to have you come and have your way this morning, Lord. We've just come to bless you and to enter in with you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. You alone are worthy of all our praise, Lord. We bless your name. Drowned sorrows, there is an ocean Deeper than the tide is dry 
teach you a new song this morning. Is that all right? So worship has been happening since before the foundations of the earth. And we're just entering in with what's been going on all along. So when we look at the picture of what's happening in heaven, what do we see? We see angels and creatures crying out, holy, 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 worthy, worthy, worthy. Day and night, night and day, worship continues. Is all about day and night. Here we go. Day and night, night and day, the sound of continual praise. Day and night, night and day, the angels cry holy. Day and night, night and day, the sound of continual praise. Day and night, night and day.
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. So as we were singing earlier, I saw the Lord, and He was walking outside the building. He was just walking through the town, and He was walking closer, and He was walking closer, and then He stepped into this building. And when we started singing this, I started seeing the tables that He's putting. He's just setting out tables in front of every one of you. And it's full of light, and it's full of amazing delicacies, everything you could want. And as he set those tables down, the angels just started surrounding, and they were surrounding, and, the, and, that, and that cloud kept getting wider and wider and wider, because as we pray, and as we praise our praises I saw earlier are little those little uh, notes that go up. They actually became little dark ninjas that went out into the darkness and started fighting those battles. So I thank you, Lord. We just thank you. As our praises go up, Father, his, his blessings and his glories come down. But today is a special day. Not only is our day of our picnic, but he wants you to know he has laid out a table before you. And it is beautiful, and it is amazing. It has everything you want, you've been asking for, you desire. And as we praise, he is fighting those battles. Those ninjas are going out, and they are doing warfare. And we are blessed. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles.
wants you. Over everyone here, everyone watching online. That the Lord would bless and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord will turn his face towards you and give you peace. Lord, you're so good. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Why don't you take a seat real quick? This is Memorial Day weekend, and we want to honor our veterans. We have a little video. If you serve or are serving, would you stand? We have anybody in here? Now, let's give them a hand. Thank you for your service. We're able to do this because people would stand up and defend our nation. So we're near you. Want to bring the lights down and bring it in? to the sacrifice, amen, that people made, and, and it always brings back to full circle to the sacrifice that Jesus made, amen, and because of Jesus making sacrifice like he did, we can handle celebrating today, amen, because he's the one who brings us peace, and that passes all understanding, and so Father, today we thank you, we thank you as we think of all the men and women who gave their lives to protect us and protect our freedom. We thank you for that today. Amen. We thank you, Father, for every one of their husbands, their wives, their mothers, fathers, sons and daughters that have been left back here and behind. Father, we declare peace in every household that has gone through loss or calamity regarding Father's standing for this USA. And we thank you, Father, for the dedication and the, the, the boldness and the, the things you planted inside them to be able to go forth and protect and to fight for our freedom in this nation. And we thank you for that today, Father. We bless you for that. And 
We honor each and every family, Father, that represents a loss and a sacrifice. And we honor you for that and give you glory. Father, we also stand here today and we thank you that you are a good and gracious God. We thank you, Father, that you reach your hand down to your people, Father. That, Lord, your word says that if you seek me, you will find me. And, Father, I thank you that people in this place have been seeking you. And, Lord, you have found them. And some of them are still trying to find you. But, Lord, you are faithful to your word that anybody who calls upon your name, Lord, you will save them. You will touch them. You can heal them. You can set them free. Father, we thank you for uh, the healings that we had in this building last week. We thank you, Father, for healing people. We thank you that in some people you've begun and you continue to heal, Father. That, Lord, we stand in faith knowing that what you've begun, you will complete. And so, Father, we love you today and we honor you because you're a good daddy and you take care of your children. And we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you that we have freedom to come and worship you and honor you this very day. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We've got a good God, don't we? He's a God that is for us, and he is always fighting on our behalf. Appropriate song to sing this morning about our generations. And it always gets me because I'm into generations, generations. You know, you always hear about generational curses coming through the bloodline, well, we have generational blessings. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. They come through the bloodline too, the blood of Jesus Christ. And I love that. I love speaking about the generations. But in um, John, just a quick scripture this morning, John 15, verse 13, very appropriate for, the, for today. It says, greater love has no man the greatest of love, all is love that is sacrificed. It is the greatest love that there is, that he would lay down his life for his friends. And yes, very, very many men and women lay down their lives for you and I so that we can sit here today and worship him. But the greatest friend we've ever had that laid down his life was Jesus. Amen. And he is the one today also that we celebrate that because of him, he laid down his life for his friend, which is you. Are you a friend of God? Yeah. I'm a friend of God. He's one, he is my best friend, amen? And he is a faithful friend. And so I thank God daily that he lays down his life for us every day. And that he ministers and moves on our behalf because he is faithful, amen? So let's remember as we celebrate Memorial Day that we also celebrate the memory of our best friend who also laid down his life for us. Because without him, we wouldn't have peace. We wouldn't have justice. We wouldn't have wholeness. Amen? We wouldn't have deliverance. And he is a good, a great, and mighty God. Amen? Okay. Well, it's good to see everybody here today. I'm glad you're with us and that you've come to celebrate this great day with us, um, our annual church picnic. Amen? We, you know, uh, we had a little calamity to get this picnic here. Uh, we canceled two weeks ago, praise God. When we walked out here, it was pouring. We would have never been able to be together. And then, you know, we had that storm on a Friday night. Pastor and Gary came up to the church, and the church tent, the poles had all, like, split or broken in half. So the tent was down. And we were like, okay, here we go again. But... They were there within 15 minutes and redid it and put it up. So God's good. So we are having our picnic today, right? And we are excited that you're here joining us. If you're a first-time guest, we welcome you. We're glad you're here with us. And we have a little perforated piece of paper. If you wouldn't mind filling that out and placing it in the offering buckets as you leave today. And we want to welcome those online too. Thank you for joining us. Uh, on our webpage, there's a Get connected tab that you can click on and connect with us and let us know uh, if you need anything or you're joining us for the first time. We're really glad that you are here. Because of the picnic today, if you've arrived and you forgot and you're like, oh, I forgot, I didn't bring anything, it doesn't matter, we've got plenty. 
plenty of food. We've got chicken and hot dogs and who knows what else out there. People have brought sides, so we're going to have a great time. The water slides here, jumping castle, horses, all kinds of things. And um, I came really appropriately addressed. Can you tell? Yeah. I have my yeah. I bet you can't tell something. I mean, uh, you look at my shoes. I have mismatching shoes on. <laughs> He's like, oh no! <laughs> But I was eight months pregnant and I couldn't see my feet. I am not this time, I guess. All right, so I'm dressed appropriate for the picnic, but I did bring sneakers to wear out there, so I'm okay. You know, I thought I'd just tell you because somebody is going to tell me. <laughs> so I thought I'd tell you first. Actually, somebody did tell me already. So they stopped me out in the hall. They said, Do you realize you have different shoes on? Me? No way. No. I, they, so anyhow, we're here to have a great day of fun mm -hmm. today as we celebrate and enjoy our picnic, even if we're in opposite different shoes, we're okay. Marilyn, so good to see you in service. Oh my gosh, Marilyn has been walking through a very hard, tough time medically and she is in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Yeah. Good to have you, Marilyn. All right, big highlights quickly this morning. Uh, youth camps coming up. Any forms you have for your kiddos, get them done and um, get them in today. We also have VBS coming up. There's a volunteer lunch August 2nd. We need VBS workers this year. I think it's going to be a great outreach. Not very many people are doing VBS. We're going to do it. All right. So see Ms. Kristen. We have Venezuela outreach. If you want to donate to that, the boxes are out there. Just read the info. And then today is also graduation. Sunday, we're going to uh, honor some of our graduates. And I didn't bring what's happening next. What's happening on the paper, huh? Okay, the chosen and the. <laughs> yeah, picnic, let's go. Okay, we're going to highlight a video this morning. Um, on Wednesday night, we're going to start an evening here on Wednesday night. So it's called Summer at the Movies. Who wants to see a good movie on Wednesday night, okay? We're going to be here Wednesday night, and we're going to start the series called The Chosen. I don't know if you've seen it. If you have, come see it again. It's good. Bring somebody, bring your youth, bring your children. We'll have childcare, but we're going to start that. And they're going to do a very quick clip regarding that. So it motivates you to be here at 7. We're going to have snacks and popcorn and have a night at the movies, okay? So be here this Wednesday night if you can. And we will love having you. Thanks, Renew. My son, they've run out of wine. Mother, my time has not yet come. If not now, when? Father. It has begun. What has? Miracles. Signs and wonders. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You have experienced a miracle, Mary. I saw it. It was incredible. Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The man has a following. He's a rogue who answers to no one. You asked me before if I knew his name. Now everyone knows his name. And I fear for his safety. Throw this down for a catch. Do you think that impossible things can happen? That overturn the laws of nature? That cannot be explained.
Arpheus, son of Arpheus. Yes. This is different. Get used to different. one way and now I am completely different and the thing that happened in between was him hey it's Dallas and the creator of the chosen and yes season one of the chosen is complete all eight episodes they're available right now you can look up the chosen in the app store or google play and we're easy to find you can download it and be watching within minutes in fact it's unprecedented technology <laughs> You can connect to almost any device you have directly and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you check out season one of The Chosen right now. All right, that's gonna be an amazing uh, time together watching the, that Chosen. Has anyone seen it? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, it's amazing. Well, good. All those that didn't raise your hand, y'all need to come. All those that know how amazing it is, invite people. And everybody invite people. We're going to have lots of snacks and food. Meat. That starts this Wednesday. So we're excited about that. All right, y'all can play our music for us. Um, today we have the honor of honoring some of our graduates. We have some, uh, we, what we do for Kids Church is they're allowed to come up to Kids Church when they're ready. You know, each child develops differently. So some come up early and some come up late. So some of our kinder grads today have been with us for a couple months already, and some will be joining us in the fall. But we're proud of all of them. Um, to be honest, this class, I am extremely proud of them for all that they've had to deal with with COVID. Many of these kids have had to do virtual learning at home and they've had to do virtual kids church learning. And I'm very proud of them uh, for how strong and resilient they are. Um, we hear many negative reports about how it's going to affect kids negatively. But you know what I say? I say they were faced with adversity. And through the power of God and their awesome parents, they're actually going to be stronger because of the adversity that they had to go through this year. So we're praying and believing that over these kids. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome up some of our kinder grads this morning, and then we'll honor our fifth grade grads. All right, and I'm just gonna stand down here. So our first graduate from kindergarten was Ms. Joy Bonet. Can you give her a hand clap? <laughs> our second graduate, thank you, this is Joanna. Can you all give her a hand clap? She's amazing. She does so many behind the scenes things. This is Mr. Caleb Sistron. Can you come on over, Caleb? This way, this way, Caleb, over here. Good job, buddy. He was gonna parade around the whole room. Good job, Caleb. Then we also have Miss, we call her Shay Shay Hatley. Come on over here, Miss Shay Shay. Good job. And then lastly, we have one of our new friends coming in the fold. This is Elijah Rodriguez. And Elijah even went through a surgery this year for his heart, and he's doing amazing. And we're so happy for Elijah. Very good. All right, guys. We also have some fifth grade grads. Um. Y'all can turn. <laughs> some of these friends, they leave me and go to youth in the fall, and some of them stay with me for sixth grade, but all of them I love. I've had most of them for their entire time that they've been in Kids Church Kindred Assist, and we love them, and it's very hard for me to graduate these guys because I don't like for them to go. Um, but these are our fifth grade grads, and again, so proud of them for all that they've had to go through 
um, with school and virtual learning, okay? All right, so we're gonna welcome them. This is Colton Stegen. All right, then we also have Hannah, and it is Ro Rocha, did I say it right? Yay, Hannah Rocha. I told all of them, if I say your name wrong, I still love you. Everybody says my name wrong. Then we have Gabby Cortez. And then we also have Lorena Ajavon. Awesome. Um, so like I said, we're so proud of all these guys um, and all that they've accomplished this year. Um, please be praying for our kids as they continue next year, they continue into the fall. Um, and we just, we love you guys and we're so proud of you. So I'm going to invite Trey and Shea up because I know that we have a really special senior graduate today. Let's give these guys one more hand clap. a very special graduate. Um, if she wants to come up here, Bella! Um, we just want to talk about Bella. Um, she's going to be going to Baylor, right? And she's going to be majoring in business. Um, she's been a true blessing in our youth ministry. This is like the example golden child of what to do in youth. She takes notes, writes down everything. Um, the team leader um, and answers all the questions. And Ju, what's somebody like? Uh, yeah, she's our golden girl. But um, we're gonna miss Bella. But we don't expect um, anything less than excellent. We know that God is gonna lead her and guide her. Um, in college and she's going to do well and then she's also going to go to college and be another example golden child what to do in college so um, we just um, we speak blessings over your college career and we love you yeah. oh, okay. uh, just wanted to piggyback off of Shay uh, Bella she is a true example and uh, we just wanted to just speak blessings over her and just pray that you're successful in all of your endeavors uh, don't be afraid of going off into the next journey. Everything's going to work out for you on your behalf. Keep God first. Keep trusting in Him. Uh, keep seeking Him and all of those good things. So I just wanted to say that, and uh, we're going to miss you. Obviously, uh, we will hope that you will do other great things as well as far as volunteering for Christ. And if you want to help out in the youth, of course, obviously the doors open. <laughs> um, one more. Um, not sure if Danny would like to come up. I know you're a graduate as well. Everybody give Daniel a hand clap as well. <laughs> Daniel is kind of newer to our church. He's been in youth for some time now. Uh, but, you know, we just wanted to honor him as well. Just pray in your next journey as well that you're successful. Uh, just pray that God is with you. Pray that you continue to trust God as well. Um, and guys, uh, just continue to pray for everyone, all of the youth in this situation. Um, just going off from college uh, in general, you know, it can be challenging. Uh, just keep him uplifted in prayer in whatever he decides to do. So everyone, give him a hand clap one more time. And uh, just keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's been a good full time here already. The youth are going to go ahead and go upstairs to uh, youth ministries. And I want to announce again, we are having a uh, shepherd heart does meet this coming Saturday, June the 5th at 7 30 in the morning. Those involved in, in, that, in that ministry at outreach, just know about that, get involved with that. It's a great ministry. This is one time of year I can kind of dress down and uh, dress real casual here. So it's kind of nice to have that just once, once a year as well. But I also don't mind dressing up because I have extra pockets. I can put things in the pockets here because I'm losing all my pockets up here. It's also an honor to have uh, my sisters here all the way from Kansas, Dana and her husband, Gary. We folks are on the way to moving to Florida. They're leaving Kansas as fast as possible, and they're getting into Florida uh, in a few days. And so no more F5 twisters, 
No more baseball size hell. You'll be blessed out there in Florida. It's going to be a great time. For some reason, God's given us all these connections in Sarasota, Florida. The guest speaker last week here, Chris D'Amico, is from Sarasota. And uh, we have our nephew out there. We have other ministry friends there, missionary friends. And so for some reason, God's doing things in Sarasota. But we're, all of us are going to stay right here, amen, in Texas. And we'll, we'll go visit Sarasota. Amen. Also, we're having some uh, uh, prayer coming up this coming Thursday night at 6 o'clock. We meet for prayer. Uh, we'll be meeting right here in the sanctuary here until the praise team, worship team kind of starts showing up. And so we can uh, come together with, with us for prayer because, again, our nation does need prayer. Folks here, we need prayer. And you guys need prayer as well. So when we come together, the Bible talks about one putting a thousand applied to ten thousand. I think it also talks about even what prayer does for in the heavenly realm around us. And uh, we need our people to come together and pray all they will together. Um, also, I want to tell you guys, there have some important birthdays happening this week here. In the Morales family, we have the Morales is back here, um, in, the, in the back here we're near. The daughter named Frances is having a birthday. Now, what age is she turning this week? 13 years old. As I prayed about Francis, I received Psalms 112, 4. Under the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion, and he is righteous. And I believe the light of God is going to shine up on Francis more and more this year coming up. I want to give a shout out also to uh, Marvin Huggins and Holiday Garvin. They might be watching online. Their birthday is also happening this week. Uh, anybody else having a birthday today or this week? Would you kind of wave at me if I'm missing any birthday folks? Your birthday is today? What's his name? Manuel. Manuel. Okay. God bless Manuel. So make sure we get that written down as well for Manuel. And we'll just bless him. What, and what about you now? Oh, my uh, grandson, Anthony. His uh -huh. birthday is June 6th. He'll be 19. 19 years old. Well, God bless Anthony as well. Just bless him and bless these folks in Jesus' name. We have some anniversaries happening also. We have Albert and Audra Alexi yeah. having an uh, anniversary this week here. So putting Albert on the spot. I don't see Audra. Well, there you are. What number is this now for you guys? 52, praise God. That's a blessing as well. They've been in their longevity. They got married at age 12, and so they're uh, doing really good now as well. Got a few grand, few grandchildren, maybe great grandchildren, but uh, we appreciate you. Bless you guys also. Did I miss any anniversary people? Your anniversary this week? It was uh, two days ago. Oh, the Roars. You're 31. Let's make sure we take them. I'm 31 for the Roars here. Awesome. Not the Roars. Let's get that written down too. Oh, let's take a moment here and let's pray blessings on these birthday folks, all these uh, anniversary couples as well. So, Father, we give you praise and thanks to God, those that are having birthdays this week. We just declare, God, that your goodness is their portion. We pray, God, that you lead them, guide them in the path of fruitfulness. We thank you for longevity. We praise you, God, that your favor would increase in their lives. And may they, oh God, be those who just uh, rejoice every day in what you're doing in them and through them by the power of your spirit. We also bless these couples. Having anniversaries, oh God, we thank you for the years they've been together. May you just, God, build in them more love, more grace, more favor, and more fruit as well in the years and, and days ahead this year coming up. We give praise and thanks, oh God, for what you're doing, that you're faithful, God, to us in all ways. And we bless these folks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Next week here, Sunday, is communion. Those that are watching online, try to have something in your hand or handy there, crackers, grape juice, whatever. We'll take communion here together and have all the youth stay in here with us for that also, that for that service for communion. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm on a brand new series called Living in the Light. I really feel that God wants to take and uh, he's talking to us about light this morning, not already prophetically. I believe God wants to take and have be people of light and see darkness dispelled around us more and more. As long as we're alive on this earth, God's word makes it very clear we are to be living in the light of God. I want to ask from last Sunday, we had a great meeting there, two meetings with Chris D'Amico. How many folks can say that you know God healed your body of something last week, last Sunday? Well, praise God, we have about 10 hands around this uh, sanctuary here. God bless you folks. Just keep on confessing, believing, saying, I have my healing. I'm going to keep my healing. And that thing shall be totally complete and not come back in Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe that God released uh, some things among us in our atmosphere as well of faith of healings and miracles. And so praise God for our anointed prayer partners and all of us that are anointed of God. We also can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Amen. So I believe that Chris Miko brought a shot to us of faith anointing that I believe is going to be a lingering anointing. It's going to keep brought on building and growing uh, by God's grace and God's favor. Today we're going to remind ourselves that the devil is, of course, the prince of darkness. 
Jesus Christ, the Prince of Light and the Prince of Peace, is the total opposite of the Prince of Darkness himself, Lucifer. The Bible says he comes but to kill and steal and destroy. And even though he does that, Jesus Christ says, I've come to give you life and life more abundant. We've got to remind ourselves all the time in this negative world around us, with all the pressures and anxieties and so forth, that Jesus Christ is still living inside of us. The Bible calls him the hope of glory. It's also called the ever-present help in times of trouble. So no matter what trouble we face, God's peace, God's grace is on us, and we are called people of light as well. God wants us to come alive. He wants us to bear down uh, or put down deep roots and then start bearing fruit in due time and in due season, fruit that remains. We're seeing around us people talking more and more about a thing called post-traumatic stress disorder. There's many, many nurses that have seen hundreds die right in front of their face by the COVID virus in the past 12 to 18 months. Doctors are going through a stressful time as well, things they've seen and experienced, first responders, nursing home workers, people with grandparents who've got underlying conditions, folks that are still watching people in their own house. And it's caused anxiety, it's causing even depression among people. And so we're going to talk about that this morning here, about living free from darkness, how God's going to give us some keys, I believe, this morning, some things we can write down, pray about, and believe that God's going to interject into us some things of light. Cheryl and I, we actually recorded the last three holes of last Sunday's PGA golf tournament because a guy we, we kind of like watching him play golf once in a while in the past, his name is Phil Mickelson. He is a guy 50-some, I think 51, two years old himself. He was the oldest guy to ever win a major golf championship last Sunday. And we wanted to see the last three holes, but because we had a guest speaker here, we had to record that and watch it on Monday. And so we saw him win, uh, did hole 16, 17, 18, win by two holes. But the amazing thing is, the first time I've ever seen this in my entire life, on the 18th hole, all of a sudden, crowds were allowed to come back to a live sporting event in golf. And these guys in the crowd were acting like crazy maniacs. I mean, these guys were trying to grab Phil Mickelson's shirt. They were trying to push through security. They were trying to crowd around all the golf players. They were screaming and yelling like there's some rock star and some great thing had taken place here. And I realized, when I realized, folks have been cooped up and pulled back like a taut rubber band, and they just can't wait to get out like a calf led from the stall and just go crazy. So today is Go Crazy Picnic Day, amen? <laughs> you guys here, a lot of you guys have been here the whole time. And I don't mean that literally, because we gotta keep our grounds up somewhat here. Don't, don't pick those flowers out there, by the way. It's just a good time on those. Um, but we are gonna have a good time today, but there's a lot of folks in the body of Christ and you realize we're not like the world. We're in the world, the Bible says, but not of the world. And the same anxieties and pressures and depression and so forth the world's facing should not be in us because there's a greater one living in us than the one that's in the world, amen? And so we're gonna see some things today here. I'm gonna draw heavily from a, a book that came out a few months ago by a powerful church pastor named Chris Hodges in Alabama. It's a book on anxiety and depression. This man himself has actually suffered depression for decades, even though he has a mega church of over 15,000 people and about 100 churches under him, satellite churches all over the country. Even though he's raised by parents that affirmed him every single day of his life, he has no background at all of abuse or of being rejected. All those things came to him to, to encourage him. He still has suffered rejection time and time again over the years or depression over the years. And so Ephesians chapter 5, I'm going to start here in verse 8. It says, you were once darkness. Notice that. Not today. You're now born again by the power of God. But one time you were darkness. But it says, now you are light in the Lord. Now walk as children of light. So we've got to remind ourselves, I once was in darkness, but I'm not in darkness today. Amen. Amen. And Chris Hodges said, as he did a series of, of several months ago also in this nation at his church, most requested message in his entire ministry career was one on anxiety and depression. He said, there's so many people suffering from this that are going through this in the body of Christ even, we need to receive some good practical spiritual instruction about what do we do to deal with anxiety and depression. Some of us that are watching online as well are still going through the same thing yourself, so please perk up your ears, listen real close, and let's take some notes. I'll give you some points here in a moment on this. Um, we're going to also talk about a lot about the guy named the prophet Elijah. Elijah is found primarily in 1 Kings chapter 18. Elijah is a major Bible character because the Bible says when Jesus Christ was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration in the New Testament, 
It says two people were with him named Moses and Elijah. And so of the two characters of the entire Bible that he picked out, he picked out Moses and he also picked out Elijah. First Kings 18 talks about what he did against Jezebel, against the prophets of Baal, calling down fire from heaven, putting in the water around the trough and causing the miracle to take place, killing all the prophets of Baal himself. Also we find in, in Revelation chapter 11, the Bible says in the last days, I'm going to manifest my two witnesses and they shall be Moses and they shall be Elijah. The anointing of them shall be on the people of God in the last days, says the Lord, when Jesus Christ comes back. And so the Elijah anointing, Elijah character is a very, very powerful character. But Elijah was a guy that in one page, he's in great victory, defeating the prophets of Baal and seeing God do miracles. And in three verses later, he wants to kill himself and commit suicide. It shows how in, in the world around us, things can change very fast. If we don't have God as our firm foundation, we're going to find ourselves sometimes getting discouraged and getting full of fear and, got, and finding ourselves going back towards darkness when we should be full of light. Okay? So we're going to read here 1 Kings chapter 19 now. We're going to be on 18, verse, verse, or chapter 19. Let's start, go back and read that now. Starting in verse 5, talks about this thing that took place. The uh, prophets of Baal are dead, but now Jezebel has threatened Elijah. Elijah is full of depression. He's gone off to hide in a cave on top of a mountain, and he wants to kill himself, and he wants to die. And so in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 5 through 8, this is all good, encouraging things to hear before your picnic. It says that as he lay down and he slept, he was under a broom tree. Notice also that it was Moses It was by the broom tree that was burning up, but was not being consumed. For some reason, God likes broom trees. I think because God likes sweeping things clean. Amen. So we find broom trees with Moses. We find broom trees now with Elijah under a broom tree. Suddenly, an angel touches him and says to him, arise and eat. That is of the Lord. Amen. First thing is arise and eat. He looked and there by his head was a cake of bread. Round Rock Donuts, fresh rolls from Vera's uh, Italian Grill, a jar of water, and some fresh Pepsi. And so he said, so he ate, he drank, and he laid down, and he slept again. And the angel of the Lord came back to him the second time, touched him, and said, arise and eat the second time. Because the journey is too great for you. So he arises, he eats, and he drinks. He goes in the strength of, of that food for 40 days and 40 nights as far as Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. So notice that when the angel of God appears to Elijah, he does not try to attend to his spiritual needs first. He attends to his natural needs first. See that and realize that also as well. So we're going to write down some things, some take home points, some steps for us to get out of darkness, out of anxiety, out of depression into the light and the victory of God. Once again, I'll be able to be, able to be some folks today. You'll be helped from this, benefited from this. So please listen. Please do take some notes. And please be willing to be receiving God's work today in your heart as you pray at the end of the service before we dismiss for this picnic today. So number one is this. We need to first of all, step into a needed recovery. When you find yourself in a cave, you find yourself depressed, you find yourself thinking the whole world is falling in around you and all is lost and hopeless. Step number one is you need to step into a needed recovery. I want to talk about a story here about a man who is actually um, suffering from kidney failure. This guy was going through dialysis. His kidneys are almost totally shut down. He was on the kidney transplant waiting list for about 10 months till the kidney finally came at the Mayo Clinic, I think in Minneapolis, Minnesota about 2,000 miles from his house. So when they, I've been told when those kidneys show up, they only live for a while. You gotta get on an airplane and get there as fast as you can to receive that kidney while it's still fresh and functioning for your body. So he gets on the airplane, he flies to the Mayo Clinic, he goes inside, they give him all the tests, all the needles, all the fluids, everything else he needs to have, get him prepped to receive the kidney. And the doctor surgeon comes back to him and says, I'm sorry, sir. You cannot receive this kidney. It will not last. And he was totally shocked, surprised, and discouraged. And, well, what's the problem? He said, your body is so unhealthy that if you receive this healthy kidney in you, your body will reject it. It will not work. You're going to have to go back home again. You're going to have to build your body back up somewhat. You're going to have to get a little bit healthier 
to receive a healthy kidney or as your body will not receive that healthy kidney in your life. Now, in the spiritual sense, as a pastor, as a missions pastor as well in the past and seeing ministry around me, I've seen how well-meaning parents and especially mothers time and time again, for, for example, they will take their child who's going through rebellion, depression, addictions, perhaps drugs or whatever else. They're in a cave. They're in spiritual darkness. And they say, if I can just get my child into a, a overseas missions trip, that will supercharge him, hopefully. God will show up there, zap him, and he'll come back a different person. And they try doing that, and they get disappointed and realize the kid comes back, the child is the same they were when they come back as they were when they went on the trip. Same thing's true sometimes of, of even going to uh, camps, or I guess speaker comes through that's full of the Holy Spirit's anointing, but they come to that service, all will change in one service. They realize that the child comes in one way, goes out the same way again, and they say, why is that? That child does not need a church camp, perhaps, or a, a seminar overseas, or a short-term missions trip, or anointed man of God in a service totally all the time. What they may need is a trip to Disney World. They may need you to take them and spend a two-day trip with them in a car, letting them talk their ears off to you about where their life is at. They might need new clothes. They might need something natural and practical to show them, I love you unconditionally. I love you as you are. I'm going to take and love you here. I want to do something to bless your natural needs. I'll feed you and let you sleep and let you rest even because you need something natural before something spiritual comes. Because the spiritual thing, you'll just reject that. It'll be like a healthy kidney coming into an unhealthy body. You see that? And so I'm saying sometimes God is saying just what is the natural thing you can do, we can do, to minister to those depressed, those backslidden, those in darkness, to affirm them that we love them unconditionally, but we're trying to push them into a spiritual atmosphere that we hope God will zap them there and get them all well in one hour. That's very rarely going to happen to take place in people's lives. You see that? Two, two folks do. Right. <laughs> well, I'm along here regardless. Imagine if God had come to Elijah in his depression, discouragement, and his hidden dark state and said, hey, Jezebel. Oh, no, no. He would have said, hey, Elijah. I've got Jezebel down there. Would you please get up and attack her? I want her taken out. The just will live by faith. Get up, man of God, and move it. It's time to get to work. God did not do that to Elijah. God says, I want you to sleep. And I want you to rest. That I want you to wake up. And I want you to eat some food. That I want you to sleep. And I want you to get some rest. That I want you to wake up and get some more food. I want you to go to County Line Barbecue and get you a nice rib there. I want you to get some barbecue going there. I want you to sleep on a nice soft bed with a nice pillow case and so forth. I want you to take care of some practical, natural needs first. And then when all that takes place, then the Bible says, then God moves upon Elijah and starts doing the spiritual thing for him and to him and through him after natural needs get met. I hope you can see that. Pastor Robert Jima who died and went home to the Lord last year, was a powerful leadership training minister from Zimbabwe. And I have a lot of his CDs in my office right now on leadership principles. One CD that he's got that's very, very good is, said, is called Too Wounded to Lead. He's found that many even ministers are too full of rejection. They're too full of hurts and wounds and bruises to actually even lead the people of God. They can't lead effectively because of the wounds in their lives. That's why many of us, the body of Christ also, we say, well, why isn't God promoting me to be on platforms or to be doing this or that or the other? And God is saying, you're too wounded to lead. If you get up on that place there of promotion by me, demons will attack you like I do all folks get promoted. And you'll be so weak and so frail and so wounded. He'll push your buttons and he'll take you out in two days. You'll find yourself offended. You'll find yourself rejected. And you'll find yourself hurt all over again, and you may never recover again. So God, in his mercy, will keep us where we're at sometimes because we're too wounded to lead. You understand that? God wants the body of Christ, I believe, to get healed up in this hour. Part of the end time revival is going to be the people of God getting the wounds, bruises, rejections, hurts, and caves broken off their lives in Jesus' name. Those are as powerful of a miracle as getting blind eyes to open and deaf ears to hear. Amen? The Bible says Jesus came to heal 
the brokenhearted. To bind up those that are wounded, the Bible says, in Zion, the church, and set the captives free. Amen? So I believe God wants Tree of Life Church, all of us as well. We're all healthy here, praise God. But God wants to send unhealthy folks to us. They might get healed up, bound up, set free, delivered, and qualified for promotion in Jesus' name. Because Satan will always attack promoted people, but he will not attack successfully healthy people. Healthy people will always reject the devil, and they'll win every time. So how do we get healthy enough to recover? That's the question. We need to get our lives back into order, first of all. Get your life back in order. What we can control, that means get control over what you can control. I talk to you guys as your pastor all the time about time management, about habits, about friends, close associations, place you work at, not working too many hours, getting a day of rest. These are all things you can control. So what you can control, get control over those things, and you'll find your life is in order in a, in a practical, natural realm. The spiritual things will come, start coming to you automatically, even beyond that as well. Ecclesiastes says this, It's better to have one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with turmoil and chasing the wind. Many Americans want to have the two handfuls all the time. They want to have all the extra goodies in life. And God says, let's sort of be content with such things as we have. And start, let's start, start pursuing more so peace. Let's start pursuing tranquility. Let's start pursuing order and not so much things and stuff and goods and security through money. Let's put that thing on the second burner, amen? And put the first burner as one hand having tranquility and peace and soundness in Jesus' name. Psalms chapter 90, verse 12, the Living Translation Bible, it says this. Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. I know you guys that are here, but again, in our church, you guys are people that honor your children. You honor your grandkids. I'm saying just keep on doing that. Honor your wife. Honor your husband. Remember anniversaries. Remember birthdays. Remember Valentine's. Remember special times. Remember the school plays and the school functions and the picnics and all these things like this. Do what you can do to be there for each other because these, our life is short. And our life goes by like a vapor. And it takes time to make some memories that are lasting memories. Amen. Don't always be in such a hurry to take and leave folks that you're close to and you love so much. Spend good time with them as well. First Kings chapter 19, going back here again now to verse 9. We're going to read what Elijah does next. So there it says, he went into a cave. He spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now he's talking to him in the spiritual realm. He says, so he said back to him, Well, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars and they killed all your prophets with the sword. And I'm the only one left and they ought to kill me too. Just whining and griping and complaining here. You see, God's got his, his natural man all fed now. So now God can say some hard things to him. What are you doing here? And he just whines and cries back to God. And then it says, then God said, go out, stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And so you're going to see here again that goes on. If you read verses um, 11 and 12, there was wind, there was an earthquake, there was a fire. It says the rocks split, the wind blew hard. There was tumultuous noises all around Elijah. And it says God was not in the earthquake, the wind, or the fire. And those who are getting to know that joke, the first time we find a rock group in the Old Testament is earth, wind, and fire on Mount Horeb with Elijah. Amen? Here they are. And it says here, once all this tumult ended, a still small voice comes, and God shows up, and God speaks. Amen. I've told you guys in the past, I've been here many years, that many times God will do natural things around us to show where our soul is at. God brought the earth, wind, and fire, the earthquakes, and, and tumult to show Elijah, where his soul was. Elijah, your soul looks like this. Boom, pow, kabash, lightning, thunder, crashings. Your soul's all messed up. You can't hear my voice. But he says, once your soul quiets down and gets into a place of peace, you're going to hear my voice once again. When you hear my voice, it's going to set you free. So step number two is this. Step into a God encounter. 
Step into a God encounter. So you step into recovery first in the natural type realm. Now you step into a God encounter. And the God encounter includes, so it says here, stepping into the presence of the Lord. You see, we're trying to get our rebellious sons and daughters and our backsliddens, whatever around us, into God's presence first. God says, no, get them into a place of recovery first. Let their natural man recover. Be loved. Be loved unconditionally. Meet some needs. Or get into their world, into their hobbies, into their movies, into, the, into their likes if they're not sinful. And get where they're at. And then number two, then seek for a step into a God encounter in their life. Number two, Psalms 46 verse 10 says this, be still and then know that I am God. When you get still, then you'll know that I am God. But you got to get still first. You see, there's so much noise in our soul, in our mind sometimes. We're not hearing God's voice. God is speaking to us. We're just not perceiving it. And I want our minds to be clear and tranquil and peaceful because God who keeps us in perfect peace will give us a mind that stays upon him because we trust in him. Isaiah 26 verse uh, 3 or 13 says that very clearly. All of us face times of distress. Things happen that are, that are out of our control. One of the key ways to get out of that is to begin with a thing called worship. Amen. We need worship. Amen. If you don't have any CDs or if you don't have any downloads on your iPhone or whatever else for worship songs, you need those. Amen. You know, Cheryl and I, we've got fast warfare songs from times past. We play those many, many times to get ourselves pumped up or just to enjoy God's power, God's grace, the workings of God's hands, the praise music of, of, of that kind of a, of a genre or whatever. But also we have old songs from the old songs that were played back in the 70s. Uh, people like Dallas Home and, and people like Second Chapter of Acts and, and people that were just psalmists and so forth that played instruments. We'll put those on sometimes in times of discouragement or times of setbacks or times of betrayal. You'll put on some kind of a nice, soft worship song and you'll, you'll, you'll draw in the very presence of God in the room we're at, in the car we're in. And when God's presence comes in, the Bible says in God's presence, there's only fullness of joy. Amen. Amen? Darkness flees when worship comes in, when God's presence comes in. So I encourage you guys, the first thing you do there again for God's presence is start putting on something of worship and begin to praise God no matter what you feel like. Do it regardless. You see what God does to show up. Psalms chapter 73, verse 16 and 17 says, When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. I did not understand this. Like my sister, as well, can testify. She didn't understand how could God put such a not nice woman as my stepmother, as my dad's wife that she got. But as I began to get baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit at age 20, the Holy Spirit began to show me her heart, her background, her pain, her suffering she'd gone through. And now I began to realize why she acted the way she did. I understood for the first time why this person is the way they are. And I had more grace for them. Now, praise God, I moved out shortly after that by, by God's <laughs> grace. But I'm saying sometimes God says, be still, know I'm God, that you might understand what you're going through and how I'm going to use this for your betterment in due time. Amen. Amen. Not all things are good, but all things work together for the good. For those that are loved by God and called according to his purpose. And I believe that as well. So we're going to move on here to, we're in 1 Kings chapter 19, going into verse 13. When we enter into God's presence, we're going to begin to understand. So verse 13 says, so it was, when Elijah heard this, he noticed this, he wrapped his face in his mantle and he goes out and stands in the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice comes to him and says, what are you doing here, Elijah? This is what God's going to bring him to. Your face is a symbol of what? Your identity. We're all known here by our face, not our foot. You, know, you can't look at anybody's foot here and know who they are or their elbow. You got to see their face. Amen. So what does Elijah do? Elijah covers his identity. He says, I'm not a prophet. I'm not as going as you think I am, God. I'm not who you said I was. I want to kill myself and die. I want out of this thing. And he covers his face. God says, no, you're going to get that face uncovered once again. 
because my gifts and callings have no repentance. I'm going to get you back out there, young man. And God does that. So it goes on and says this. So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts. The children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They killed all your prophets. And they got the sword after them as well. And I alone am left. And they seek to take my life as well and kill me. Elijah is now saying the same thing as, as the prophets of Baal were saying themselves. Elijah is saying the same thing as this. He's lost his confidence because Jezebel has said, I'm going to take your head off by this time tomorrow. So help me God. He's saying the same thing the devil's saying, agreeing with Satan and agreeing with powers of darkness and finding himself staying in darkness, not coming into light at all. This all came from verse one. Now, today's version is a comment of, of, on the Facebook and of Instagram. The things that Elijah said here is what we're hearing ourselves on social media. We're hearing folks finding our weaknesses, finding our faults and finding things we do wrong, posting them on Facegram or Facebook putting them on Instagram and saying the same thing Elijah says, I, woe is me, I'm undone, I'm no good, I'm a bad person. Look what they posted here. And God says, don't believe the report of man or the devil. Believe my report, saith the Lord. Amen. People are out there trying to say things to pollute your spirit. And I'm saying, don't let them. You need to learn what God says about you and don't care so much about what man says about you. Amen. Man may say all kinds of negative things about you, but know what God says. God has only good things to say about us because God is only good all the time. So number three is this. We need to step into our true identity. Step into your true identity. All that matters is what God has to say about us. Not what Facebook says. Not what Instagram says. Not what social media is telling us. Believe what God says about you. Now, you know, I've, I've noticed again in ministry here in spiritual warfare that uh, every time I hear, start getting attacks or we get attacks from people that are uh, coming against us in some way, whether it be in the church, outside the church, whatever else, it normally means the devil is getting threatened by some oncoming victory God is sending our way. The devil can see angelic hosts around us in movement. And the devil can see that God is lining things up to bless your life in some way. He'll bring in the attacks of the devil mainly through other Christians with their mouths many times to try and discourage you, to try to reject you, try to bring pain to you, and try to somehow sidetrack you from the blessing God wants to bring into your life. So when bad things take place through mouths or whatever else, I'm saying reject that and hear what God says about you. The world and social media may beat you down, but God says you're loved. God says you're blessed. God says you're precious in my sight. God said, I sent my only son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. God says, you're the apple of my eyes. God says, you're my son and my daughter forevermore. God says, you're the redeemed of the Lord. And God loves you with an unconditional, everlasting love. Do not let man beat you down through social media or anything else like that. You are loved by God. One of the things that God, that helped our children in our own family, our three kids, one boy, two girls, to have a healthy self-identity as they grew up was every day we got in their face at nighttime in bed and told them we love them. We're glad you were born. We're glad you're my son or my daughter. We prayed over them. We joked with them. We laughed with them. We take time for them. And all three of those children have got a, a healthy self-identity today, but all three of them have gone through major battles in their life to attack their self-identity. I don't want to go in detail for the privacy of my children's sake. Because they don't like me doing that. I don't want to owe them money as well. But I'm just saying, I'll guarantee you, they've all three have had their own personal fights and battles they've gone through <laughs> in their lives to attack their identities. Amen? But they're pulling through and have pulled through in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I believe a foundation has been laid there that have who they are in Jesus. That no weapon formed against them can prosper. Pastor Chris, who wrote that book again, gave his version of 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 14. It's called the uh, Pastor Chris translation. It's on the screen here right now, I think, as well. I, I would also would mirror the same thing myself. I'm going to say it the way he says it. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. I've been preaching three services every weekend for 20 years. The government and Dr. Fauci won't let us fill our auditoriums. And culture is going to hell. 
And I'm the only one left. Instagram's trying to kill me too. <laughs> That's what most pastors say right now. Amen. And it's probably halfway the truth. Amen. But how many know, folks, know pastors aren't going to give up? Churches aren't going to shut down. We are not going to give up. We're going to keep right on going on because we know what God told us to do, what God's made us to be. And we know that God is greater in us than the one in the world as well. Amen? We're going to keep right on going. Eleanor Roosevelt said this, Nobody can make you feel inferior without your consent. And that's true. Number four, last of all, you got to go back now the way you came. Once you get your identity through God, go back the way you came. When you find yourself in a cave, you find yourself depressed, you find yourself feeling like the world's coming down on you and full of anxiety, go back the way you came. First Kings chapter 19, verse 15, New Living Translation. The Lord said to, to Elijah, go back the same way you came. Travel to the wilderness of, Dam of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Haniel to be the king of Aram. And so Elijah was told to go back to Beersheba, the place of the oath he made, where he told God in the very beginning, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will die for you, Lord Jehovah. I will never turn my back on you. I will always do what you say. I will be your man. Elijah made an oath at the very beginning. Now Elijah is saying, I don't want to kill myself and die. I don't like this thing at all. God is saying, return back to your beginnings. Mm -hmm. Go back to the first place and do what you did before, saith the Lord. This is where Elijah told God, I'm going to serve you till death. Elijah had forgotten his purpose. He forgot what he was made for. And I want to say again, God's giftings, God's callings have no repentance. God won't change his mind about your destiny. And about why you're on this earth. Everybody here right now, every person's got a destiny that God ordained from the foundation of the earth. A purpose for every life here today. And God will never change that purpose. He made you on purpose the way where you're at, who you are, the sex you are. If you're a boy, you're a boy. If you're a girl, you're a girl. Let no man change that. Let folks get delivered and believe otherwise. God made you who you are on purpose. Because God can use you the best if you find out his will and obey his plan for your life, saith the Lord. Is that true? Amen. Even secular psychologists will affirm, if we, wake, if we wake up every morning just trying to chase a paycheck, we'll be of most people miserable in life. Mm. That's all we're doing is chasing paychecks. We'll be miserable in life. We're going to be heading to a cave. If we take on a project, they say, that will impact eternity, it's a whole new ballgame. All of a sudden, life makes a difference. You know, my, my sister Dana here can testify as well that my dad, uh, who, who died several years ago, was a farm boy from Missouri, didn't receive Christ as Savior until I was 11 years old. She was 12 years old, so he was in his 40s. And his, his wife had died, kind of led to that whole thing in a long, in a long short story deal. But when he finally got saved, he got full of God's love and God's acceptance. And I just saw his whole countenance change. And all my dad knew about was he loved picking the guitar and he loved to speak into his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. He began sitting down for hours making testimonies on tape to send to all of his unsaved brothers and friends what God did in his life. All of a sudden, for the first time in his life, he had an eternal purpose to be alive. And he actually was happier than I'd ever seen him his entire life. Isn't that true? You see, God, when God gives you a purpose to wake up for that's eternal, you make the eternal differences, it gives you a reason to want to wake up every day and rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to have Greg come back to the platform here. I'm going to close here in a moment as Greg helps me out. The psychologist named Viktor Frankl says this. This is the guy that helped out the Holocaust victims to not kill themselves. Because many Holocaust victims were full of post-traumatic stress disorder. They were very depressed people. You can understand that. They've gone through hell on earth. And he helped them not kill themselves. He told them people have enough to live by, but nothing to live for. They have the means, but they don't have the meaning in life. We go back the way we came. Paul had a horrible life after conversion. I'm going to close here reading 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. You know, Paul was a guy that went through all kinds of 
mishaps after he received Christ as Savior. Paul's life in the natural actually got worse after Christ came into his life. He got filled with the Spirit. His body went through worse. His soul and his spirit went through better. Amen? But his body went through a whole lot of stuff. It says here in verses 16 through 18, let me read this. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man, our body, is perishing. The inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not, not seen, the things which are seen are temporary. The things that are not seen are eternal. This is a man named Paul who was beaten three times with a cat of nine tails, 39 lashes, three times more than Jesus. This is a man who also was shipwrecked and bobbed in the ocean for two days facing drowning or sharks. This is a guy that got bit by a poisonous snake. This is a guy that had false brothers rise up and split his churches. This is a guy that had beatings take place time and time again. This is a guy that spent his life in prison after Christ, chained to Roman soldiers day after day, eating who knows what, in total discomfort in his body every day. This guy wrote these words. I take comfort that I don't put, I don't put glory in my flesh. I put glory in the Lord. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed right now today. And those that are watching out there as well, if you guys listen to me as I close this service, the Bible says Elijah goes on in the power of God and he goes and anoints Elisha as his successor. He goes out there and anoints King Haram, another king over Israel. He anoints Elisha as a prophet to take his place. And it shows, and it shows us here that what God does is God brings in a re relational strength into Elijah's life. He said, Elijah, you're not meant to do this walk with me by yourself. You're meant to have people around you. And I encourage all of you that are here today at Tree of Life Church Live and those that are even watching online as well to realize that no man's an island to himself. You need friends. You need companions. You need somebody to speak into your life. And God puts Elijah with Elisha and other prophets and kings. He says, you're living by yourself too much, Elijah. Doing things by yourself too much, you're getting burned out. And God brings in relational strength into his life and his heart. And God is telling us again today, it's time for us to take and be the people that let God restore our identity. We find ourselves seeking God's presence. We find ourselves doing the natural things, first of all. To love our sons and daughters unconditionally that are backslidden, that are in caves, that are in depression. So, Father, right now where our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed in this place, I praise you, God, that you take and you show each person watching online, those that are here live, that first of all, we need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Only he can bring to us salvation, but also healing from rejection, from pains and hurts and wounds and bruises from the past. He brings, oh God, life more abundant. He only comes, God, to do good things in our life. So you that are watching online right now, you that are here live right now, if you've never prayed a prayer to ask Jesus Christ to be your God, your Lord, your Savior, today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Just take time even right now where you're at or sometime today. Say, Lord God, I realize I can't save myself. I need a Savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the earth. And I ask you, Lord God, right now to forgive me of my sins. Come inside my heart. I receive your forgiveness. And I ask Jesus Christ that you live inside of me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Take sin from me. Be my God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I'm not meant to govern myself. I'm not meant to be a, an island to myself. I want to be one of God connected to heaven from this day forth. I want to follow you all the days of my life. If you pray a prayer like that today or sometime in the near future, let us know by calling us, emailing us, texting us, somehow get a hold of us. We got a book to send to you as well. What do we do next after receiving Christ as Savior? Don't you that are here that are already saved. Hope that what I've said today makes sense. It's coming from notes again, researched for over two years by Pastor Chris Hodges as well. He's seen Hundreds and thousands getting delivered and getting set free from things that have caused him to go into caves. And many folks from the COVID virus have gone into caves. 
God is saying, God is at the, at the door of the mouth of those caves right now saying, what are you doing? It's time to come out. I'm not saying be foolish. I'm not saying say, do things to get sick. But I'm saying don't be an island to yourself. Spend time with God. And in due time, you get back with God's people once again. But well, that's available to you. Let's all stand to our feet now. I'm going to have prayer partners going to come to the front now. If you do that, please. They'll be up here to pray uh, and for anybody that's prayer today. That you want prayer in your, for healing for your bodies, perhaps. Maybe you want to pray for someone not here today that needs prayer. Maybe you want to pray for some kind of relational thing. Maybe you want to pray about today's message. That God would take rejection, pain, hurts out of your life. And give you soundness and wholeness once again. These folks are here to pray those kind of prayers of agreement with you. So please come to the front sometime before you leave and go out the doors. And just be prayed for and let God work in your life. As far as the picnic goes, we're going to be dismissing you guys here now. I'm going to, I'm going to pray blessings on the food even from the pulpit here. We're going to ask that the parents try to get with your children and go with them through the line. Some children have, a, have bigger eyes than stomachs, and they take about 10 cookies or whatever. I'm saying just, uh, just be uh, mindful of that. Go ahead and be with your kids through the line and take a moderate helping at first. Then come back for seconds or thirds or whatever after that as well. It'll be enough for all for sure then. And I want to say thanks to all you folks for bringing side items, bringing desserts, bringing the food. Thank the Pittmans. For cooking all these things, putting these things together. Thank God for all of our ushers and helpers loading up tables and chairs and getting all things together for us. God bless all you folks that are helping us out. Praise God for God who gave us clouds for, for shade, 85 degrees for the high in Central Texas in the end of, end of May. No rain to pour down on our heads today. And the wind is calm, breezy. It's a perfect picnic day. Amen. Amen. God is good. So I'm going to pray for the food. One more thing. And there's also giving yes buckets at the door if you want to give today tithes or offerings there's buckets on both sides here make your checks out to tree of life church prayer requests put those out write those out on your bulletins put those in those buckets as well for prayer requests and first time guests also please fill those out get those in the buckets we'll get in contact with you by letters uh, sometime this week all right well, let's pray for this food father we thank and praise you god today for the precious day you've given to us oh god this memorial day weekend we do bless oh god the widows the fatherless, those who've lost loved ones, oh God, in, in wars, not just this year, but years gone by. Heal their hearts, bring peace and, and comfort, God, to their soul. And protect, oh God, those that are in harm's way today in our armed forces. Bring, oh God, divine protection to them every day, Father. Bless, oh God, the food be prepared for us. We give praise and thanks for the food you've given us, oh God. And we say, bless it all to our bodies. Bless our time together. Let our mouths, O oh God, be full of seasoned, seasoned salt. We give praise and thanks for your goodness among us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.